He was in a wheelchair and he had very, very little movement in his uh, fingers and arms. He was on a ventilator and his life was essentially consisted of watching whatever TV channel was put on for him. He used to be a, a massive, massive Call of Duty fan and there was absolutely no way, you know, he, he thought he'd ever be able to play the game again. We went to visit him and we uh, looked at his body and we worked with him and we set him up with uh, two joysticks, one on his chin for the left joystick, one underneath his wrist and then another separate series of uh, five or six micro switches which went underneath his fingers. He just had tiny movements in his fingers. And he also had movement in his heel as well, so we were able to put a switch next to his foot and he was able to you know, hit a switch like that. Now all that combination of switches and joysticks meant that by the end of the day, he was playing Call of Duty again with his mum, you know, and to go from nothing to that within a day it, it is, and it, 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 you just you, you can't put a price on it. Special Effect was started 10 years ago by our founder and CEO, Dr. McDonaghan. He was working at the time at a charity that uh, helped people with very severe disabilities, I uh, think Stephen Hawking with uh, um, speech generation through, uh, through artificial speech. And uh, inevitably what ha was happening at the end of uh, the sessions when uh, he was helping people is the parents would say, well, that's fantastic, you're helping people, at, uh, these children at school, which is what uh, the charity did. But what happens in the evening? What happens at the weekend? You know, they, 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 their quality of life is really low. They can't interact with, with any other children. They can't build up any friendships. And it was about the time when computer games and video games were really uh, beginning to make an impact. And he realised that actually there's, for, for children who can't you know, run around, can't play a real game of football uh, and, and can't interact physically you know, with, with games with their friends, that, that video games would be a way to level the playing field uh, and do that, which is why the charity started. The way we help uh, is, as far as we know, quite unique. Uh, we, uh, we ask people to get in touch with us and, and tell, tell us what their disabilities are and what games they, they want to play. And then we'll send out a team, a team of uh, maybe a technical specialist and an occupational therapist to, to visit these people, usually in their homes, because a lot of the time they're either, um, uh, their disabilities mean that they can't travel here. Um, <clears throat> And we'll try and work out uh, a physical way in which they can access uh, the game that they want to play. Now, sometimes that, uh, that means something as, sim as simple as, for example, somebody who may be missing a finger or has a problem with a, f with a finger can't use the trigger buttons on a, a controller. We'll, we'll modify the controller and put a, a drill and a, a, with, with a drill and a soldering iron, put a socket in there so we can run out switches for their head or, or maybe on the front of the controller instead. Uh, other people we see have more uh, uh, severe disabilities. There's people with um, spinal muscular atrophy or muscular dystrophy who, who may be in a wheelchair, who may have really, really quite limited movements of their bodies, and we're talking millimetres. Um, and in that case, we'll, our OTs will search for a way, they'll try and find, manipulate the, the, the ways that the, the arms and legs to see if there's any controllable movement at all in there that we can we can maybe slip a switch under or if it's a voice maybe we can we can plug in a voice control or maybe it's eye gaze or maybe it's a it's a head switch or a foot switch and sometimes we'll use a combination of all those ways of um, controlling uh, switches and, and various technology to uh, to be able to play the games that they want to play. So this is an example of a, of a setup, maybe for somebody who doesn't have uh, fine motor skills. We've got uh, a very a, a sort of easier to use sort of heavy, heavy duty joystick there. And we've got some big switches here, which we can use to, for the controls. Now, as you can see, then this is all mounted on a, a comfortable lap tray. Now, these are all repositionable, so they don't necessarily have to be hit them with a finger or a fist. Um, you could do this on a knee, 
you could do this on, on, uh, on an elbow, you could do this on a head, it just depends where the, where the movement of the body is, uh, is most controllable. Um, and this essentially is an exploded uh, controller, uh, which is housed in this box. An interface, which again is just connected back through into the PS4 via an adapter stick. And it's a combination of all these controls plus, you know, the work with our, the, our OTs and tech people do that make it work. And, and the other part of our work, which, uh, which actually isn't necessarily gaming, but is a byproduct of what we do, or an, actually an essential part of what we do, is our Stargaze project. Now, um, quite a lot of our, our resources are spent in uh, l helping people who have, you know, severe traumatic accidents. For example, if you fall off your bike and you break your neck and you wake up in a hospital and you can't move and you can't speak and the only thing you can use is your eyes, you know, and what our Stargaze service does then is we will... Uh, a team will come to you, to you in hospital with an eye control computer that enables you to communicate, that enables you to interact a bit more with the world just when you need it most, you know. And time after time, we're seeing examples where we've been to see people who've, who've been at the lowest of the low at their points, you know, and even their families are, you know... Um, are struggling and we've been able to introduce technology that you know has been able to give them hope it's been able to help them immediately at that time of need but it's also been able to show them what would be possible in the future and and that all stems from uh, our CEO's uh, work with with eye gaze he's he is uh, a, one of the foremost uh, people involved with with eye gaze in the UK almost and, and actually the world um, so um, t for us to be able to use that knowledge that he has and, and our staff have now about the eye gaze and to put it to a, a use, a real, real uh, practical, uh, you know, hard-hitting use uh, is actually fits perfectly with our aims, which is why we offer that service as well. We're, we're very lucky that um, the... Uh, the gaming community, the gaming industry, is you know uh, generally very supportive of what we're doing. Really, so and we're 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 honoured. You know, it's constantly uh, and uh, amazed, and we never take for granted any of the help we give because because it is you know it's a crazy business model. We're we're providing all our help for free, and it's just ridiculously expensive to employ specialists and all this technology and equipment and and vans and petrol and uh, everything. Just to just to help people for nothing, but you know people do get what we do. But we we are reliant on uh, you know uh, lots of different people fundraising fundraising events, and we do have um, quite a few during the year. Yes, we've got um, uh, the British 10K in July. We normally the gaming community and companies come out in force, and there's this huge team of gamers running in different costumes and that kind of stuff. Um, but also coming up, you know, in the end of February, there's Game Blast, which which is a bit like a children in need for gamers. We just ask gamers in the UK and beyond and companies just to spend some time that weekend playing games and getting sponsored to do it. And uh, if they want to make it into a marathon, you know, 12, 24 hours, even better, you know, provide a few forfeits, make the stream interesting, you know, maybe do some giveaways, maybe do some auctions, you know, just have real fun gaming. Uh, and uh, gaming for the right for a really really good reason as well to, to raise money to help us. Um, we're hoping for I think our target is a hundred thousand this year, which uh, fingers crossed you know we're we're, we're going to push towards. But for us as a team, it's so exciting because these these are friends of ours. You know, we, we, as as people contact us and say we're doing it, we're looking. Oh, it's yes, it's them again. It's uh, you know, it's, it's so and so and so and so. So um, every single donation really does mean an awful lot. Yeah, I'd, I would actually just I would like to say thank you to the you know the gaming industry and the gaming communities and, and our local community here in Oxfordshire for all the help they've given us and all the support they've given us. Um, Working, doing what we're doing um, is, is 
It's, it's inspiring, but it also can be challenging, it can be very frustrating, much like you know, a lot of other jobs, but, but in different ways. And to hear the messages of support that we've had from people really, really does make a difference. You know, if somebody emails in and says, I love the work you do, you've made a difference, uh, and just keep, keep going, that makes us smile. That just doesn't go into somebody's in tray just to get lost. You know, every person who contacts us, we, 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 it's family. It really is. It's just one big family. And um, that's how we want it to stay because uh, I think once you lose, it, it, once we lose our personal touch, to, for, for want of a better of a phrase, you know, we might as well give up because of the, the, whole, the whole reason for what we're doing uh, of raising quality of life and levelling the playing field is based on personal touch. It's based on one-to-one -one, you know, interaction, not just with the people we're helping. It's also through our supporters and, and everybody we see. And uh, I'd just like to say thank you for everybody for their support. <laughs>